Welcome to the P40 Podcast. I'm Shreen Vishmaya in San Francisco, and I'm so excited to be sitting down today with founder and CEO of Astrology Hub, Amanda Walsh. Thank you. So Hi. Much. Thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun, Shreen. I always love talking with you. So thank oh, you so much. Thank you too. Um, and I love we, when we were kind of getting ready to start. Um, I asked Amanda how she wanted to be introduced, and I think this is a really important conversation moving into 2020 about your title even. So I thought that would be a great place to start with CEO. I love that, that you're taking the stigma out of that. Well, okay, so I have to admit that I stopped saying it for a while. I stopped saying CEO because I realized that just the word would automatically turn off so many people, and that it's really associated with like, greed and power hungriness and destruction and you know all these things that i personally have no interest in standing for mm -hmm. so i stopped saying it but then recently i was like wait that's not right because one of the things about capricorn so i'm a capricorn sun capricorn mercury capricorn venus mm -hmm. and i always felt bad about that part of myself i always because especially as a female, it was like, God, the, the whole executive thing, it just felt so dry and cold and boring. And I was like, I don't want to be any of those things. In my journey to understanding myself and understanding the gifts of the, my chart, I've realized that I need to embrace it and help to redefine it and give an example of how it can look that's very different than the CEO that we don't like. Right. So that's, I just, I recently, I'm like, you know what, I'm bringing it back. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to own it. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be ashamed about it at all. <laughs> yeah. We have to celebrate it. I feel like this is a whole part of like dismantling the patriarchy is like for women to step up into their power. Yes. And, and part of that could be coming up with a new name. I mean, we may decide we don't like CEO we don't like chief executive officer, but you know, I don't have another one yet. So for now, I'll be the CEO. <laughs> I, like it. I like it. I like, I like that you're claiming it. And, um, and I just, I love all the work that you've been doing. You're such an amazing contribution to the astrology world. And I was telling you, you're such a role model to me because I'm now just stepping into triple Capricorn mode. So I'm like, tell me all the Capricorn secrets. I don't think it's dry at all. I think Capricorn is so mystical and such an amazing marriage between the spiritual and the material. Oh, Yes. And again, this has been, this is why I love astrology. I feel like there's these layers and we get to just like blossom open to the fullness and the richness of it. So mm -hmm. I would say that my Capricorn dry, boring thing is old. I don't feel that way anymore at all. And I've really tuned into the sea goat element of it, that mystical mythological creature that doesn't even exist. <laughs> I even yesterday did a video shoot for our upcoming uh, 2020 forecast event. That Ooh, yeah, we got to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I wore this kimono with a big mermaid on the back. And I was like, this is my shout out to the sea part of the goat. And we don't, we don't talk about the sea part of the goat very much, but that's actually what makes it so like, like amazing, really. Oh yeah. And this is so essential going into 2020 with this really powerful alchemical marriage between Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. And we're in like the Capricorn Saturn return generation right now. They're all having their, that triple conjunction generation with the Saturn, uh, Neptune Uranus in Capricorn. There's like all these mystics, like that generation's amazing. And they're really like coming out and I'm just seeing like all the amazing work they're doing. And they're teaching me so much about the power of Capricorn, like realizing like there is such a mystical side to it. And I think there we're is. all going to come into that. Yeah. Well, and I personally feel like combining the power of, of business or, you know, that the, the structure called business, whatever that is, and spirit, like infusing spirit into the way that we do business is essential and so potent. Like you see the, the ability for that to create ripple effects of positive change. And if we, if we sort of shy away from the business thing, thinking that it's not spiritual, it's like, well, we're the ones who have to bring the spirit into the business thing. I used to have a 
back before podcasts and back before Astrology Hub and all kinds of things, um, I had a little radio show called Sacred Commerce. Wow. And again, this was before I knew anything about my chart. Now I know my Capricorn's in the 12th house. So like, of course I was interested in sacred commerce. Like it's like so literal, you know? Um, but, but just how we can use business, not only as a vehicle for positive change, but for internal change, like, so external change and internal change. It's like, you're going into your triple Capricorn-ness, right? Mm -hmm. So all the challenges that that brings up for you, all the internal, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing because we all share these things like self doubt and any ideas you might have about not being that person. And so can you really step into that role? Like, are you allowed to be in that role? You know, there's, there's all these things that come up for us as we're creating gifts and being of service to people that it's an alchemical process. Yeah. Yes, the whole entire thing. It's an alchemical process. And so when we embrace it that way, it's a lot of fun and there's so much growth. Yeah. And speaking of which, I'd love to hear your story, like how you decided to embark on the whole astrology hub venture. Like it's, it's just amazing oh, wow. you've created, but I'd love to hear your journey. <laughs> <laughs> do we want to start in New York? Do we want to start in Hawaii? <laughs> cool. Well, we're, we're like the start start. I'm Scorpio. I want to go all the way to like... All the- right. Well, the start start <laughs> had to be in New York then. I was uh, running a technology company. I was working 80 hours a week. I had, you know, everything on paper that everybody wants materially. You know, I was doing the good Capricorn thing and climbing the mountain and <laughs> my degrees and getting my success, you know? Um, but then I had a daughter and I realized that, you know, it's like when you have a child, your priorities shift like pretty much overnight. And I realized that if I kept going on the track that I was on, that A, I would barely know her because I would never see her. B, she wouldn't know nature or, you know, she wouldn't know what it's like to just like run out in the yard and play and climb a tree. Uh, We were living in Manhattan. So I just saw the trajectory I was on and I was like, oh my gosh, I do not want that. That's not what I want. And all of a sudden the work that had been fulfilling and exciting to me, when it took me away from her every day, all of a sudden I was like, God, do I even really care about this? Mm -hmm. Because I care about her. I don't know how much I care about this. Mm. And so it just started this big like questioning of, of what do I really want? Who am I really? What do I want my life to look like? And I remember this one day I was in my apartment in Tribeca and I was vacuuming. And my husband at the time, I said, I stopped the vacuum and I looked at him and I was like, I really want to help people. Mm. And he like looked at me and he was like, you do? Because that had never been the emphasis, right? Like I was the Capricorn doing the like stereotypical Capricorn thing. It had never been like, I really want to help people. Yeah. And he was like, you do? And I was like, yes, I do. And so anyways, we decided to move. We decided that I, I quit my job and this was a process, right? I quit my job. We moved from New York to Hawaii, a place that had been calling to my soul for like ever. And, um, when we moved, I was second, I was seven months pregnant with my second daughter. Mm. Didn't have much of a plan, very un-Capricorn moment. (laughs) Didn't have much of a plan, didn't have much of, you know, know what I was really going to do, but I just knew that I wanted to make a change and I wanted to use my gifts and service, my gifts and talents to be of service to people. Mm. So we moved to Hawaii, a whole entire process of unraveling happened. Mm. Everything that I had built around this self-concept had to go. Mm. And it was crazy. Like it literally was so hard. I ended up getting a divorce. I was in a total financial crisis and a career crisis. I mean, it was like a complete undoing and it lasted for years. During that time, I discovered astrology. (laughs) I had my first astrology reading with evolutionary astrologer Natasha Alter on the Big Island. It was super synchronistic how it all came into form. I sat in tears in her living room as she was giving my first reading, just going, oh my God, how does this perfect stranger know like what my soul is saying? How does she know everything about me? This is amazing. It was my first experience of God. I was like, 
Wow. I, you know, I went to 13 years of Catholic school. I studied as many world religions as I could. I got my degree in psychology, all with this quest of like, who are we and why are we here and what's going on? And my first astrology reading was the first time I had this like, oh my God, there is a divine intelligence that is so far beyond anything I can conceive of. And there's a plan for my life. Like I'm not just floating around aimlessly. Like there's a purpose to all of this. And so I was hooked. And um, it was it was probably a couple of years after that first reading where, you know, astrology was totally a lifeline for me through this really dark time that my best friend's husband, one night we were sitting and sitting at dinner talking about astrology. He walks in the room and he goes, you know, I have this URL, this domain name, Astrology Hub, that I bought a while ago and I've just been waiting to see if I would ever do anything with it. Would you like to do something with me? And I was like, yes. <laughs> like the marriage happens, the marriage between gifts and talents and and service and helping people and, and, and being passionate about something. Anyways, I had no idea what, what it would become. And this was about five years ago. And it has blown me away. Like every day, I cannot believe I get to do what I do. I cannot believe I get to talk with people like you uh -huh. and share astrology with the world because it is such an honor. Like to be a steward of this craft, of the science, of this art is... Um, beyond my wildest expectations. And if you had told me 10 years ago that I would be doing this, I would have called you crazy. Literally, I would have laughed at you and said, yeah, right. I had no idea even what astrology was, you know? So wow. that's my <laughs> what a beautiful story. I love that. That's so inspiring. And also the journey, like it really does feel like you went into your sea goat self, like you even moved to Hawaii. I did. I moved in, I moved to Hawaii. This is a place that has, um, like I said, it's, it's called my soul for a really long time. I know I've had many lifetimes here. I've had like memories of those things. I dance hula here. Hula is like the thing that is for, you know, I love yoga too, but yeah. like for me, hula is my yoga. It's like yeah. my meditation. It's my connection to the land. It's my connection to spirit. It's, it's definitely oh. my thing. I totally get it with the dancing. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. Yeah, I love that so much. Yes. And I wonder if you, maybe you're in your progress Pisces phase because it feels like you're so in the Pisces now. Are you, do you know if you're in your Pisces sun? Now? I believe that I am yeah. in my progress Pisces phase. Yes. <laughs> Hence cool. being on an island surrounded by water. <laughs> I know. It's so perfect. I love that. Uh, and what, I would love to hear maybe just like, what's how that like last five years has evolved like what what are some kind of like highlights or funny stories you want to share over the last five years that you know oh, God. the creation of it maybe to help people like it probably feels so daunting for people who want to like start their dream or start something that's like such because it's such a powerful community you've created you know community is something i love like for me, it's, it's the ability to like, I, I actually feel like suffocated and lost without it. So it's like this, the, the, the technology enabling the an instant access to this amazing community that is gathering around astrology. I mean, that is what feeds my fire or fuels my fire. Um, the, it's been a total journey, Shireen. It is, um, you know, I wasn't doing it full time at first. The first thing we did was an online summit. I, I, and, and so, and we, I'm not an astrologer and he wasn't an astrologer. So mm -hmm. we had to really create the relationships within the astrology community. You know, they, the astrology community was very guarded at first and I get why, you know, it was like, okay, here comes another like business person trying to poach on astrology and like, you know, make money with it. Mm -hmm. So it took a while for them to really trust the intention and the heart behind what we were doing. And, um, and, but that happened over time. And so basically I just started interviewing a bunch of astrologers and sharing what they do and giving them a platform, just using the different technologies that are available, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook and zoom and Instagram mm -hmm. now, and you know, all the different platforms and just saying here world, how amazing are these people? And, um, we built you know, we built our audience through those summits at the beginning and just kind of leveraged the, the audiences that they had built. And then we were building our own. So we cross pollinated a lot. 
which I love too, that model of like, you know, all of us benefiting from the work that we're all doing to bring astrology out into the world. Um, you know, and over time I built a team at first, it was just pretty much me doing everything. So like, if you're trying to do something and it looks daunting first, it's the, the, the other thing I want to say is I did not know what it would become. Like I didn't have this grand business plan that I executed to perfection. And here we are today. It really has been a very organic process mm -hmm. driven by the intention. Like, yeah. so I really think holding that really pure intention and trusting that the resources will come that, you know, and when, when they do come, like go, you know, get the training you need, get the, um, you get the mentors you need, listen to the podcasts that you want to emulate, mm -hmm. you know, watch the YouTube videos of the people that are doing it the way you really like, mm -hmm. and then always, always bring yourself to it. Mm -hmm. I really think the reason, one of the reasons why astrology hub has kind of stood out in a sea of, of options is because we have done things as authentically as possible. You know, that is one of our core values is to be real and to connect with people as people, because I don't want to connect with people as a brand, you know, yeah, I like I like who that. wants, who wants to connect with a brand? I remember the day that, um, my business partner at the time came in and was like, you know, someone's going to have to be the face of the brand. Like we need, we need a face of the brand. And I was, and he's like, will you do it? And I was like, I guess. I mean, I don't know who else is going to do it. Like, do you want to do it? And he was like, no, I don't want to do it. I was like, well, I, I'll do it. And I didn't really know what that would mean. But what's happened is it's been this, talk about alchemy, this process of becoming in, in, on all levels of my being, mm -hmm. astrology hub. Yeah, like, so, so it does. The other thing is choosing something that you're okay merging with in that way. So my North node is in, is in Libra in the eighth house. Oh. And so this idea of, of like merging mm -hmm. is, is really something that like my soul explores and like, how do you do that? Like, how do you merge, but like also be a whole person. And you know, so, um, that's just a, a fascinating exploration. I feel all the time, yeah. but, um, you know, and, and, oh God, again, I didn't set out and go, oh, I'm going to merge with astrology and be, you know, I, I didn't like think of it that way, but I knew that astrology had enough of a hold on my heart and my soul that it was, it, I was getting the green light to keep going in that direction. Yeah. Beautiful. And I feel like one of the things that makes it so, um, from the, the clients that I've shared it with that really love, like people that I've brought in and that say, Oh, you know what I really love about astrology hub is that you like, you can tell your hearts in it. They can tell your heart is actually in it and that you want to make it accessible. You're not trying to make it some kind of elite thing yet. It's still really good information. So it's not like you dumb anything down, but I think because of your orientation of being like, you came in as somebody who loved astrology, not as an astrologer, right? that you bridge the gap because that's the difference. Like if an astrologer tries to do it, often what we, what happens to us is we forget that there's a lot of people that want to come in and learn the language. And we're already speaking in what my <laughs> astrology mentor called astrologies. And it's like, you need a mediator. Like you need mm -hmm. someone to tra a translator. Totally. Oh, you totally need a translator. <laughs> it's so funny. I'll be on, I'll, there's so many times I'm on a call <laughs> or on a, on a webinar or whatever. I'm like, nobody knows what that person just said. I mean, yes, we have like the advanced astrology students who like are totally tracking with it, love it, can eat it up. And then everyone else is like, queen tongues? What is, I've never even heard that word in my entire life. <laughs> yeah. so it can be super intimidating. And, and I agree, like the fact that I'm not an astrologer and I'm actually in the canoe with them, yeah. like most, you know, especially, but I actually think we, we, could do an even better job at bridging the gap with the oh. beginners. And that's one of the things that I am very focused on, like going forward, because I think we've done a great job serving the like intermediate advanced yeah. student, but the, but the new person that gets thrown in the middle of the deep end and is like, Oh my God, like I thought I wanted to study astrology. I'm really called to it, but I'm lost. I feel left out because yeah. I can't understand what anyone's talking about. It's those people that I'm I'm really wanting to get even better at serving because, yeah. because, because it's very important to me that it feel inclusive. And so it is this fine line. Like, how do you 
how do you not dumb it down and water it down so much that it is like anybody could jump in? You know, I think there's, I know there's a way to do it Mm -hmm. where you're still maintaining the integrity of the craft because the way that I've been thinking about it lately is you, you hop in the cycle of your learning wherever you're at Mm -hmm. and you just have to trust that even if there's things that you're not getting, you're getting what you need for wherever you're you're at. Yes. And so as you keep going in that spiral, right? Because it's totally a spiral of learning. Like, Mm -hmm. and and you don't even know what's happening. And all of a sudden you're starting to say things that like a year ago, you didn't even know what that meant. But it's, it's like, it's like you're marinating in it and all, and it just sinking in layer by layer. So I, I'm, I'm like, real close to having it in a place where I really like it to um, speak to the beginners and the astrology hub podcast has really helped with that. Oh, great. Like the podcast is reaching a whole new audience of people. And so it's, it's really exciting to get, I feel like it's a, um, an edge for me personally to, to crack the code on this. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. And I feel like um, from the, ast- well, actually, before we go into that, I want to like, just talk about the 2020 um, Astrology Hub um, program because I'm a dancer. I'm dancing. At least I don't have a story that's like making sounds today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wanted to use the word extravaganza, like it, it because it's what it feels like, but um, we it's didn't. I got, I got voted down. Um <laughs> Our tw- yes, so I swear from the time that I had that first reading and I started tuning in with astrologers, you guys have been talking about 2020 and how like so much of what we've been doing over the last years has been in preparation for 2020 and what's to come beyond 2020. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make sure that we are doing everything we can to, to give people the information that they need to feel empowered and hopeful and inspired about 2020. And, you know, there, there can be some fear around it because anytime people are talking about big change and big transformation, it's like, you know, he was like, Oh no, what does that mean? Um, So, but I personally think that the more awareness that we have and the more tools that we have and the more consciousness we bring to any of these big astrological events, the, the, the more we get to actually benefit from the gold and there's always gold. It's, it's always benevolent, right? Even if it doesn't feel that way. I remember going through my divorce and just being like, why would I ever ask for this? You know, because people will be like, Oh, it's happening for a reason. And you wanted this to happen. I'm like, no, I didn't. I didn't. And and what reason? This just feels like my entire life is falling apart. I don't like any of it. I don't want it. And when I would get readings and I, by the way, I got three different readings just to confirm what they were all saying, which is I was going to get divorced. I remember being like, could it be like an internal divorce? Like, you know, (laughs) it had to be an external divorce. It was like, no baby. Yeah, exactly. It was like, no, you're getting divorced. I was like, oh God. Okay. But they always talk about Jupiter's placement in the whole thing that was happening and point out to me that it. I would be better for it, that this was an opportunity for expansion, that this was an opportunity for me to become more of who I had set out to be. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm hearing from all you guys that this year is really about. You know, it's this opportunity for us to really embrace our evolutionary path. And so we get this opportunity to understand what it is, understand what's being asked of us and step into it with as much grace as we can. And then, and then hold each other in community because that's the thing, like, you know, things come up that can feel overwhelming. I mean, we just had a woman in our inner circle group. She was in the hospital. She was freaking out. She's in a country away from her family and her friends, feeling alone and scared and disconnected. And she reached out to the community and just said, you know, I don't always post, but here's what's happening for me. And I'm scared. And she got flooded with love, flooded with support, flooded with inspiration from all the members in the inner circle. And she wrote to me personally and was like, I am blown away. Like, I feel so connected to all these people. They're, they're like strangers technically, right? 
you know, that we, we haven't met in person. We just were in a group together, but that's the power of coming together in community. So we're having the 2020 global forecast marathon. It's the fifth year we've done the forecast mm -hmm. marathon, which is basically a three day event. I get to interview 12 astrologers, you included Shireen. And we take, we go through every single month of the year and talk about the key things, the key transits, the key dates, um, and tips for working with those things. Um, we'll get to hear your take on the overarching theme of 2020, um, your input on things that all of us can do as we go deeper and navigate the year. Um, and then on the fourth day, which is January 12th, which is the day of the big first big conjunction, we are having a bonus group meditation. Mm -hmm. So we're inviting um, many of the astrologers to participate and help guide that. And we'll come together at the exact time that the conjunction is happening. And we will be centered and in our hearts and allow for the magic to happen, mm -hmm. which I've just loved. We've done some group, we did a group meditation series on the global um, Eclipse, eclipse, the American, oh, great American right. eclipse. Yeah. Oh my God. God, it was crazy. Like it was, I mean, this stuff is real. You know, we're like, we're working with some powerful energies. So I think the more consciousness we can bring to it, the better. Yeah. And of course we, we're not controlling events, but, but we're, we're co-creating. We're co-creating and the more, you know, strength in numbers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So powerful. Yes. I love that. Um, and you know, it's funny, the more I've been meditating on going circling back to our CEO conversation in the very beginning of this podcast, when I've been meditating on the numerology for the year being a four, the emperor for 2020, that my sense is, and the more I've been talking to people and the more I've been feeling into it, because, you know, as it gets closer, you start to feel like what's the new energy shifting. And if we're moving from the empress, which is Venus and creativity and kind of getting ready to birth something into the emperor of structure and form, which is also very Saturn, my sense is that everyone needs to, everyone is feeling this pull and this call to really step into their, everything you've talked about, their individual power, their authenticity, like leaving behind, whatever it is, like whatever, like the tragedies of the past, like using that to bring you into this new opportunity of, okay, you're here also for a purpose and something very individual, very Aries, like your I am sense, right? And how do you step in? Like everyone's a CEO of their life, right? Or, yes. Or, you know, there's a funny thing that my guru Amma says about CEO. I think she calls it, like, she says God is, like, chief ego operator or something. Like, he helps with the ego. <laughs> something like yes. that. I find that's so funny. Yes. <laughs> Saying you wanted to change the acronym. But, yeah, so I feel like all of us really stepping into our true, unique gifts and power. And I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be branching out into um, entrepreneurship. People that were afraid. Do you notice so many people are finally making that leap? Yes. And did you know that the word entrepreneur, oh my gosh, I hope I don't butcher this, but I, oh shoot, I got to get this back. It's the, the word entrepreneur actually means um, like servant and guide kind of an idea. Like it's, oh. it's, it, it's, 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 man, I, I got to find out. I got to get, I, I will get back to you on that, but it's, okay. it's I mean, like when I heard what it is, it was like, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it feels like um, as a steward of something, right? You're a steward of a vision. You're a steward of an idea and you're the one bringing that forth, right? Uh -huh. The way I've been thinking about the, the whole, like we're all CEOs, I was literally just thinking about this this morning is we are, we are kings and queens serving kings and queens. Like we serve each other. So I always think of like astrology hub as like my realm. And I'm here to serve. And, and of course, my daughters and, you know, the people in my life is that's my realm and I'm here to serve them. And so there's things that are not inside my realm. They're in your realm and you're, you're there to serve your realm. So getting clear on what your realm is and then that devotion to your realm, um, it's, it's exciting. I, and, and yes, I have seen way more people moving into entrepreneurship and stepping into that role. I mean, technology is enabling us to do that in massive ways. Definitely. Yeah. So I think all of like your stories are really supportive and helpful to people that probably feel like it's so daunting and they have to have like this perfect plan. Like you said, you didn't have no. like, perfect Capricorn structured, like step A, B, C, D. No, 
Not even, not even close. <laughs> I, I like imagined you did. I'm like, wow, it's so organized. It's so, because I'm also, you know, I'm always trying to create structures and I'm always like, I'm doing it very Pisces moon style. Like, I don't know, let's try this and that. I'm learning the Capricorn, but it is also just trusting things do just kind of evolve. It's both. It's totally both. I mean, the Pisces with Capricorn is perfect because it really is both. And, yeah. and, and what I've found um, is that when we try to get too rigid with it, it doesn't have enough space to shift when it needs to. And soul, right? Like you yes. Oh, oh. Feel if you bring in soul or not, like you can't do a contrived marketing thing. You cannot fake soul and you cannot fake heart. Not so both practical. of those things, it's like when you said that, that people are saying that to you about astrology hub, that's like the highest compliment to me because it shows that what we're tra transmitting is actually coming through, you know, that the energy of it is coming through and it's definitely not something anybody can fake. That's the thing too. When people get worried about, well, somebody else is already doing that yeah. or, you know, there's, there's thousands of astrologers already and they're all on YouTube and whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter because you are you and yeah. nobody is going to do it the way you do it. Exactly. And so as long as you're authentic and true to yourself, you don't have to worry about things like that. You don't have to worry about competition because the thing is the people that resonate with your vibration will be attracted to you. Now, the one thing I want to say about that, the only thing I want to add to that though, is when I was on the big island, when I first moved from New York, I really wanted to test the completely Piscean feminine approach <laughs> and have no plan, you know, really have <laughs> no plan and, and no training and you know, I was like, I'll just put the vibration out and the right people will be attracted and it'll just work, right? <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. And what, what's sad about that for me is that the creation that I had over there, it was called Pele Ma TV. It was a very similar idea to Astrology Hub and that I was, but I was highlighting spiritual teachers, kahunas and elders and things over on that island who had helped me during that whole breakdown period, right? Mm -hmm. That whole creation died on the vine, because I didn't do this attorney in peace. Yeah. I didn't bring the structure. I completely relied on a Piscean feminine approach. So that's why I say it's both. It's, it's totally both. And, I, and I've, I've had experience, you know, super masculine New York City thing, to super feminine Big Island thing, to hopefully nice combo Maui thing. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like it's been a bridge. And I feel like you know, going into 2020 again with like that really strong Saturn energy that we do have to have a strong, really solid foundation, structure, integrity in our work and time put in and mastery. Like there's definitely not no skipping steps, even though of course Neptune's in Pisces. So there is some of that. There are those miraculous things that just happen along the way, but I feel the way to really assure that it's going to be something built to last is to do the Saturn piece. Totally. The other thing it does is it, it helps you conserve your energy and direct your energy right? Because if there's no container for it, it's leaking all over the place. And so you're less potent. Yeah. So when, when the structures and the, and the discipline and the, and the, those, you know, mastery kind of things, you know, the hard work and, mm -hmm. but hard work directed, like, you know, like yeah. discipline directed. Yeah. And that's where the structure thing comes in because I think for a long time, well, even just recently, we just implemented like project management platforms, which I resisted for a long time. It just felt like one more thing I had to learn how to do and I just didn't want to do it. We brought this project manager in who like said, you have to, like, there's no way Astrology Hub can grow on like email managing your pro projects. Like you have to implement this. So I said, okay, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And it is changing everything. Like- wow. I can't believe how much easier it makes it, like running the global forecast marathon, which every year is this massive project for us. Huge. There are so many moving part, parts to it, right? Oh yeah. It's usually so stressful for me because I'm like holding so much of it in my head. And then I'm like, wake up in the night. Like, did we do that? And is so-and-so doing that? This platform, like if I do wake up in the middle of the night, which I haven't been, oh. I can just look at the little thing and be like, oh, we're working on this and this thing's done and this one's stalled, but here's why. It's like, oh my God, it's changing everything. Wow. I love that. And I was just thinking, you know, it's interesting. I don't know. I feel like we might have even talked about this in one of our other interviews, but it's just coming back to me. Sometimes I think like I'm coming up with a new idea and then I'm like, I probably, <laughs> probably <laughs> had it and forgot it. But <laughs> like the idea of like how Saturn is really at the base of the chakra system, 
Like, so before you can even get anywhere near the heart, you have to have a really strong fat burn. Yeah. Like the root. So, and then we've got to go all up. I mean, we've got to build all those lower energy centers to get to the heart. So if Saturn is weak, how are we going to get there? Safe. Totally. How is it going to be safe? Like you said, I think it's just leaking and at least it's rained and we don't have boundaries. And so I think Saturn's really coming in like to the collective unconscious like guys like all right let's do this like let's really get our structures in place we're dismantling the old structures that didn't work the power structures but just because we're dismantling those it's like the ceo doesn't mean you take away right parts it's not like it should yeah. just, like you said it shouldn't just be all we can't just have like the divine feminine without any kind of we need to move into this emperor energy actually which is kind of interesting because there's been so much focus on the divine feminine but it's we can't so both now oh i love both yeah. I love both. It's okay. so exciting. Yeah. I, 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 um, this is like kind of personal, but I, um, two years ago, actually, I just realized this on the day Saturn went into Capricorn. So the, on the solstice in 2017, right? 2018. Oh, 2017 going into 2018. Right. Exactly. Yes. yes exactly. I had my first date with the man who is absolutely my king. Mm. And Two weeks before that, I had not to, I don't even know exactly when, but I'd written in my diary, I am ready for my king. Mm. And so he came, so we, we, you know, we, anyways, we had our first date on the solstice and I'm realizing now I, I always knew it was the solstice, but I didn't draw the connection that it was the Saturn going into Capricorn. Holy, whoa. Oh. <laughs> so over the last two years, I've been in this, well, what does it mean to be the queen to the king? And, and I'm the queen of my realm and he's the king of his realm. And how do the realms work together? And how do we meet each other like as equals in that way? And God, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. beautiful. I, I mean, so when you say that the, we have the empress and the emperor and that's what we're moving into, I'm like, yes, it's great. It's not easy. You know, there's times where I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I want to be like, the little girl, like, I don't, you know, like yeah, yeah. stepping into truly stepping into like our queen and our king and wearing that mantle is a process. Cause I, I just think there's a lot of places where we've allowed ourselves to remain disempowered. Yeah. But, good point. But it's exciting and it's great work. And, 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 and the result of it is, is amazing. I mean, the alchemy that happens when, when the two come together, yeah. like, I couldn't be doing what I'm doing without the energy that he has brought to my life. Oh, this, yeah. Supportive yeah. energy. And he's brought so much emphasis on creating structure for mm -hmm. me. Beautiful. And also that's a beautiful kind of like that part of you that was like, why am I going through this divorce? Yes. And realizing there is on the other side, you know, there really was something better for you on so many levels. Yes. You can say better, but you know. Oh, like, no, I it, love it. it. And, <laughs> totally. And the beautiful thing is my ex-husband and I, we are very, very good friends. We're like brother and sister. He wow. lives very close to me. We're co-parenting 50, 50. Like it's such a better expression of the energy of our relationship. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we're better as friends than we were as husband and wife. So it's actually, yes, on every level, what the astrologers were telling me is true. <laughs> it has been benevolent. It has been good. So any of you out there who are like going through those dark times, just keep doing the work and trusting that it is necessary, that there's something wanting to emerge through you. And there's things that need to fall away in order for that expression of you to really take form and to really come and have its life. So um, I know it can feel really dark though. That's such a I beautiful note. Yeah, that's such a beautiful note maybe to end on, but I also want to ask, just so for people to know how to, how best to get involved, how to find okay. our inner circle and just to yes. like, what's the best way to get into astrology. Shireen, when is this podcast episode airing? This will be, I'm just going to put it up soon. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so the first thing that everybody that you can do, you guys, we put together an incredible PDF guidebook. It's the 2020 astrology guidebook. I've been asking all the astrologers, so is 2020 really a big deal? And if so, why? And every single one of you has said yes. I mean, all the astrologers that I talked to from all the different backgrounds, all the different modalities, everyone agrees that 2020 is a massive year. 
And so what we've done is we've taken highlights from astrologers and what they've said. We put it into this PDF guide. So you have one little guidebook that will walk you through some of the points of why 2020 is such a big deal. But here's the part I love the best. And this is free. This is a free guidebook for you. What I love best is that um, at the end of it, we go through and detail tips that the astrologers have said that you can use to work with the energy between now and the end of the year. So how can you prepare yourself, body, mind, and spirit, and soul between now and the end of the year so that you're really ready to meet those energies. And so that's available to you. If you, can you put the link in the show notes? Definitely. I will totally put the link in the show notes. Um, okay. And um, I, yeah, I hope to get this up over the next like 24, 48 hours. So. Awesome. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys are going to, I think you're going to love it. Would love to hear your feedback. The other thing you can do is join our free um, global forecast community. Mm-hmm. So we have astrology hubs, global forecast community. It's a free group. You can join it. We're talking about the forecast coming up. We're talking about the podcast episodes where I, the other day I just, I woke up and I was like, I want to write a love letter to astrology. Like I just yeah. want to, well, yes, my, yes, I have, but it was like, I really want to write it, you know? So I went into the group and I wrote my love letter to astrology because I cannot get over the amount of gifts that it has brought into my life. Even my king, the way that we, our first interaction, I saw him at Macy's in the bedding department. And he was like, he had heard that I might be an astrologer, which I'm not. Um, but so he was like, Hey, do you do readings or could you like connect me with an astrologer? And I was like, oh, I know some like astrologers. I could connect you. So that was my like opportunity to actually like engage with him, which was so cool. Astrology has brought me endless gifts as a mother, as a leader, as a partner, as a, as a human being. Um, so I wrote the love letter and then I, I said, let's write a group love, love letter. I want to see what you guys say. I literally have been reading these things and bawling my eyes out. It's so touching to see how astrology has, you, you got to go in there and look at them, Shereen. They're, they're so beautiful. And, and you could write your own, but I invite you all to just join the group, check it out. Um, there's a lot of great energy in there. And if you want to start tuning into community to get you ready for 2020, it's a great way to do it. The inner circle is not open for enrollment yet, but it will be soon. Okay. So if you're interested in joining us in the inner circle, Shireen's going to be one of our astrologer guides in 2020, which we're so excited, so excited about. Um, that enrollment's going to be open um, starting soon, but right now. Okay. So is there like a wait list or do people check? Um, just get in the groove on the forecast stuff. The, the, the forecast kicks off our inner circle enrollment. So okay. they'll, they'll get lots of opportunities to learn about it. Okay. Amazing. Oh, Amanda, thank you so much for your time today and all that you shared and inspired us so much. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such an honor and so beautiful to meet all of you out there in Shireen's realm. It's very nice to meet you.